Hi, I'm Ross Grieve, and I'd like to welcome you to uh, Street Photography, and I'm gonna take you through some tips, tricks, do's and don'ts over the next 20 minutes, and we'll also look at some pictures, and we'll talk through those, so hopefully you can get out there and improve your street photography too. So let's get into it. Well, street photography to me is about storytelling. You go out there to create a story of the whole image. So when you show it to people, then they can interpret their own sort of story from it. And that's a really exciting thing about street photography because everyone sees your imagery differently, whether it's really dramatic or documentary style or whatever. It's all unique to the photographer. Camera choice is a really personal thing when you're shooting your street photography. You can look at, say, a full frame system. That's quite uh, big compared to other cameras. You can go down to a slightly smaller, which is a micro four thirds. Um, I choose to go on something like this, and this is still a micro four thirds, but it's really uh, discreet and doesn't look like a, a big massive camera. I almost look like a tourist because I really want to blend in into the environment, blend into those surroundings, and then I'm unnoticed so I can get the best imagery I can and it makes my job so much easier and you get the images you really, really want. When you're out shooting your street photography, you really want to blend in. So even think about the items of clothing you're wearing. You don't really want to go out in a high-vis vest and shoot street photography because you're just going to stand out like a sore thumb. So just sort of um, wear quite neutral colors. You're going to blend in to the surroundings around you and then you'll get some really, really good imagery. Remember, you're gonna probably have a smaller camera as well. You don't need a massive lens and that will help you blend in as well. Think about the locations you're gonna use as well because that's also really important. Train stations and airports are such good locations for your street photography. I love people watching and these are a really good gathering, but obviously in today's time, we need to be a little bit careful. So when you arrive in a train station, really take in those surroundings or even at the airport because they're going to be a lot emptier now so you can get some really apocalyptic sort of looks to them. But really soak in what's going on around you. Um, use a slow shutter and we'll talk about that a bit more. But there's so much going on in those, in those places that you'll be able to get some absolutely unique imagery. So why use a slow shutter when you're shooting street photography? Surely you want to freeze everything, right? Well, not always. Using a slow shutter can add drama and add a new dynamic to your photography as well. It can also create movement within a picture. By dragging or slowing the shutter down, you can blur people so you don't have to get a model release, which is useful at times. But also, it can really add life to your photos. And here are a few examples, which I'm gonna talk you through. Waiting is a prime example of how you can use a still subject combined with using a slow shutter to gain that uh, movement in a picture and just create that bit of um, action and diversity into it. You know, it's at a train station, I'm heading home, this guy is just with sweat back hair, is just standing there alone waiting for his train, and then the train comes whizzing through. So it almost gives the impression that the train is creating like a draft to sweep his hair back. Um, I really like it, I've desaturated it slightly just to add a bit more grit because it's at a train station. But it's a very, very simple technique to do. And again, probably around 15th of a second. Again, all my street photography is handheld, that's really important to remember, I don't walk around with a tripod, but this is something really simple to achieve. Homeless in Osaka was taken in Osaka, Japan. I had just arrived in Japan that day and I wanted to go out and stretch my legs. It had been raining, so I went for a wander around Osaka just to have a look that evening. When it rains as well, it's really nice because you can get these beautiful reflections on the floor. And there's a really famous part of Osaka which has got a river running through it and there's a lot of people around and a food markets and all that going on. And just across this bridge from where everyone was rushing by, there was this homeless person 
um, holding a card written in both uh, English and Japanese, please give money. Everyone was going from work to home, not taking any notice of him. And it was just this image of solitude and that was sort of accentuated by slowing down the shutter of everyone rushing by because his, he was completely frozen and, and not moving at all. So I shot this about uh, one fifth of a second. It was handheld as well. Um, it took a couple of attempts to sort of get it so I could just have that gap in between um, the people rushing by to sort of central the, the homeless person. Um, it's a really useful technique um, to also isolate someone or isolate a subject, but also when you convert it to black and white, it really shows off and gives more drama to the image as well. Interaction is a really important part of my street photography. Some people may call it street portraiture, but uh, I like to include it in my street photography. It's really simple just to go up to someone and ask if you can take their photo, rather than standing back, taking a photo, and they may not want to be photographed. Plus, it's just normal human behavior to engage with people as well. The art of communication is getting lost because we get so absorbed into our phones and our tablets and, and technology. So actually speaking to someone is quite refreshing. Even if you say hello, that person is gonna say hello back. So be polite and courteous when you approach people. If you want to use the image, remember to use a model release, which I'm gonna talk about shortly. Model releases, it's something that some people get terrified of, especially when they're doing their street photography. I tend to work by the rule in the UK that if it's editorial, I don't necessarily need one, but if it's gonna be for commercial work, I will need a model release. But make sure you check what wherever country you're shooting in because laws do vary around the world. Now, so how do I deal with a model release when I'm out in the street? Well, we've talked about um, interaction with people and engagement, so talking to that person, I will ask, and I'm thinking, well, this could be a good commercial, uh, have commercial value to me. Do you mind uh, signing a model release? And I will use an app, uh, which is called Easy Release. Uh, there's another one out there called um, uh, Image Release. And the person will sign your phone. They'll get a copy. You'll get a copy. Um, plus, I always send them an image um, as courtesy as well that, um, that's been taken. So there's ways to deal with it. And it's again engaging with that person and just talking to it and being honest and you know polite and courteous to someone and they shouldn't have a problem signing a model release. Timing is a really important part of street photography and once you incorporate this into your photography it'll really really improve. Say for example if you're shooting a portrait you're looking down the lens you're composing everything and it's coming together really really nicely. But with street photography, you need to look outside that frame and actually look what's gonna walk into the frame and time it. Whether it's a person just walking through and you want to time it so you get their stride, or you've got a car coming through and it's gonna add speed to it when you're dragging the shutter. So there's lots of elements outside your actual frame which you're gonna take, which can enhance your picture. And that just comes down to practice, practice, practice. Get out there and practice your timing techniques and what's gonna come in. Be aware of your surroundings, what's gonna to add to your photo. And this will improve your street photography. But practice is the key, and then you'll understand how timing can make your pictures even better. With locations, you have to remember some of the places you may be shooting on are private property. Take markets, for example. Those are normally private property. So, you really should respect uh, that private property and even seek um, permission if you're going to shoot on there because you don't want to sort of ups upset the landowners. So there's all little things that can make your life easier. Don't sort of go looking for confrontation, make your life easier, then your photography will shine through if you're enjoying your photography and you're not getting all stressed out about worrying about other things. Something that you can add to your toolbox for your street photography is editing on the go. And what do I mean by that? I mean actually editing on your mobile phone 
or a tablet. When I go out, I try and keep what I carry to a minimum. So I will just take my camera and my phone. I don't really want to lug around my laptop um, because again, I want to blend in like we touched on earlier. So on my mobile phone, I have Photoshop um, Express and Lightroom Mobile, and that all syncs over the cloud as well. So when I get back and I look at it on my desktop, all those editing and those images um, have synced in. So if I wanted to edit something straight away to see how it looks, I can do that. I create my own presets as well. So everything you see in my street photography, those are my own presets which I do um, use across it. So I get that nice signature look. And that's another thing you want to have is actually create your own style so your photography stands out and people can look at it and they will recognize that street photography as yours. So have a go editing on the fly. It's good fun and it makes you think about your photography again as well. Now a few of you may be thinking, I really want to give street photography a go, but I don't like approaching people. I don't like photographing people. What can I do? There's so much out there to photograph when you're photographing street. Wall art is one of my favorite things too. But you don't have to photograph people's faces. Like we said earlier, you can drag the shutter, you can blur people walking through a scene, or you can just go out and photograph street art and make it interesting by including bright yellow lines and whatever else you, you like to see. So there's wall art, there's signage, there's all sorts of things that are really interesting to look at and photograph and put your own interpretation onto them. And it's also a really good way to sort of practice light and how it reflects off different surfaces. So you don't have to go out and photograph people. You can go out and photograph whatever you like. You will have noticed through my photography that I occasionally photograph people who are less fortunate or homeless or are living on the street. Um, I think it's really important to sort of document that and show it in a sympathetic but sort of strong way. And I will try and speak to the people and find out their story as well. The first one, um, we had just finished uh, shooting a street portrait of an artist and we were getting on, about to get on the train, I met Jacobs and I, to head, head back home. Just by the entrance of the tube station, this couple was sitting there, um, obviously homeless, asking for money and stuff. So I spoke to them and asked them their story. So he was ex-forces, they had both just um, come out of rehab and they'd gone through the whole program, they were back on the street. Um, yes, we obviously gave them some money to help them out and yes, they were asked if they would mind being photographed, um, which they agreed to and this is the way I sort of work out if someone is genuine as well. Um, I will ask, do you want me to email the photograph to you? And if they're genuine, they will say, um, oh, can you contact the shelter, whatever shelter it may be? Because unfortunately, there are professional beggars and homeless people out there who uh, prey on your sympathy to get money. But these are all genuine people. Um, so I photographed them. My battery was very, very low as well. So I crouched down, just about to take the photo, and this couple in the background walked through arm in arm. You couldn't script it. So the couple in front of me who were homeless arm in arm, and then there was a couple behind walking through um, who were heading home. And the irony was, as soon as I took that photo, my battery ran out, and I couldn't even show them the photograph. It breaks my heart, because I couldn't show them the photograph. Um, and the irony is, I couldn't look at it until I got home. The next photograph is of Mark. Now he was just outside um, Covent Garden, no, yes, Leicester Square um, tube station. So I was doing a contrast of Christmas. So I'd just been to Harrods and photographed the doorman, which is the photograph you would have seen. And then I thought I need to get that other contrast, which is obviously people who, you know, Christmas time, not with family, on their own, struggling to get by. I came out and I met Mark, spoke to him and asked if he could be photographed. And what was really interesting, he said, what are you doing it for? Why? Because he'd been taken advantage of uh, being photographed before. So I explained what I was doing and he was more than happy. And also he sort of pointed me in the direction of where he's staying so I could send on information there. So just because someone is on the street doesn't mean we should ignore them. Um, 
I think really, really strongly about it. Um, it's, it does hurt when you see people on the street and you know not in that sort of fortunate position we are, which is the last person as you can see, um, she's under a pouring down rain in Cardiff and just soaking and just trying to keep dry. So my whole, because I got into street photography, it's even made me look at um, people in society around me differently as well. Because you're people watching the whole time, take time to see what's going on around you. And that's a really important part of street photography. So I thought I'd take you through some of my favorites and tell you loosely the, some of the stories around them. The first one we're gonna look at was taken in Dublin in Temple Bar and it was actually shot through a pub window. Uh, the guy's up there, he's sitting on the windowsill having a cigarette next to a chemist sign and below that chemist sign, you'll see a camera looking directly back to me. So it's sort of got that whole circle going on and it's sort of 1984 um, feel to it. I really like it and it was one of the first sort of images I did with street photography and it sort of got me into it as well. Um, that people observation, what's going on around you and seeing those objects and uh, making them really interesting. And that's the beauty about street photography as well. You will see something different each time you take a photo. The next one is quite a powerful image and it's made powerful by purely by the wall art behind the subject. Now he's just on his way back from lunch or from prayer and then the wall art behind it makes it that much more dramatic. And I've been asked, was this set up or not? And it's not, he's literally just walked through the shot and he's got that perfect stride on as well. Um, so I took the shot, looked down, went wow, looked up and he was gone because I wanted to speak to him. So because I wasn't able to, I've only used it in an editorial sense, not commercial sense. Next photo we're looking at is the doorman at Harrods. And we've got the drag shutter feel, so to isolate him and get the rush and hustle and bustle of Christmas. Because this was the other photo of the contrast of Christmas uh, collection. So it was two shots, it was the doorman at Harrods and there was Mark the homeless person, which we've discussed as well. So you can sort of see how that adds a bit of drama or um, excitement to, to a shot by just dragging that shutter, having a slow shutter and asking the subject to keep completely still. This, is, as you know, is a photo that is very dear to me because there's a story behind it with the battery dying, but I couldn't have scripted the couple in the background walking through arm in arm, off to go home, or the couple in the background are huddling together to keep warm. It's really sad and endearing at the same time and just makes us aware of how different people's lives are as well. And I think it's really, really, really important to document that. Homeless in Osaka, this was one of the first images that I used to drag the shutter to isolate the subject, which I've used before, which you will see quite often. And that's sort of become a bit of my style. But when you see someone across and you really want to isolate them, but also not sort of cut them out of the scene, dragging the shutter is really, really useful. I personally like it. I like the look. Some people may not like it, but like I said, that's all about developing your style. You'll notice I like airports and train stations a lot. I, I shoot a lot of those. So this was actually taken in Doha Airport on the way to one of the gates. I sort of walked around the corner, dropped my bears, because as soon as I saw the lights and the reflection on the floor, and being a bit of a Star Wars fan, I thought that's something out of the Death Star and I have to photograph it. So I took, ran off a couple of shots, then carried on springing to my gate and uh, did a bit of an edit on my phone. And I love it, it's just that, draws you into that perspective, those leading lines which just draw you in each time. And I love images like that. And such as this next one as well, which is actually shot at Terminal 5 in Heathrow. So I was on my way to uh, Photokina in Cologne and it was a very early flight. So I think it's about 20 past seven in the morning and I just cleared uh, security. So I'd gone through security, um, I was safe to photograph and the light coming through was just amazing. The colors were wonderful, they looked fantastic. So I was thinking, mm, that might look okay. And then I took the shot, put the, put the camera um, actually on my bag to take the shoot, because I didn't have my tripod with me and I just wanted that uh, little bit of steadiness. 
And then I looked at it and thought all the colors were really sort of fighting each other. There was, you know, reds and warms and golds and stuff. Um, so I decided to go black and white. And because the guy had walked in, and this is about timing, which we've discussed as well. The guy had walked in in the shop. We talk about the stride on the legs. He's got that, everything. So once you make it black and white, he's isolated straight away, purely by the reflection on the roof behind him, and it gives it more strength. So you'll start seeing your photos in black and white as well. And that's really, really useful for you too. And the last one, again, taking another airport. This is San Francisco airport. And normally you'll see travelators full and packed with people going back and forth, back and forth. But this was closed and it was empty. So I leant over the barrier and put the camera down quite low. So below shoulder height, so I could get that interesting angle. And that's how you can also make a street photography interesting not just by shooting at eye level, but actually dropping the camera down to either street level, hips, shoulder height, chest height, and it just gives that diff different perspective and can give you really nice leading lines which will draw people into your imagery. So get out there and give it a go. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch street photography. I really hope you've enjoyed it. You'll find my contact details below for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So drop me a line, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you've got any questions, pop them in there as well. So get out there, stay safe, be really courteous, enjoy your street photography, and most of all, have fun doing it.